I want to look at a couple of examples of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, hopefully you know the basic theorem. Uh, if you have a right triangle, you can label the two legs, which are your shorter sides, and the order doesn't matter, but the two legs can be labeled A and B. And the hypotenuse, remember the hypotenuse is your long side of your right triangle. Make sure that's your C side. That's really the key. The hypotenuse will always be opposite the right angle. Remember that the largest side of a triangle is opposite the largest angle. The smallest side is opposite the smallest angle. Obviously, the middle side is opposite the middle angle. Um, but the Pythagorean theorem says if you take a leg squared and you add the other leg squared, you get the hypotenuse squared. And the formula is relatively simple. Not nearly as complicated to say the quadratic formula, and it's it's pretty nice to work with. So, uh, for example, here uh, we've got a triangle. Um, we can basically fill the numbers into the Pythagorean theorem. The leg squared plus a leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, and you can just solve that little equation. Uh, we're going to get 36 plus x squared is equal to 100. Um, and sometimes you're going to have to do a little bit of equation solving. Uh, in this case, I can subtract 36 from both sides of the equation. Uh, I get x squared is equal to 64, and that missing side is going to be 8. Okay. Remember, you don't want x squared, you want x. So take the square root of both sides, uh, the square root of 64 is going to end up being 8, and that's my missing side. Okay. Uh, if we look at the second example here, um, again, it's the leg squared plus the leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Okay, uh, that's going to be four. That's going to be nine. It's equal to x squared. Uh, in this particular case, you're going to get 13 is equal to x squared, and it turns out that x ends up being the square root of 13. Okay, uh, do check your square roots. Sometimes they'll simplify. Sometimes they won't. Um, in this particular case, it's not going to simplify, so you would just list the square root of 13 and you would move on. Okay? Uh, again, unless a question says to round, leave it in radical form. All right? Now, sometimes you're going to see radicals that maybe have a little bit more going on. Okay? Uh, here we've got a whole number side, so leg squared plus the hypotenuse, sorry, leg squared plus the leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Make sure that entire two radical six gets squared, okay? Especially if you put that in a calculator. Make sure you've got parentheses around the two radical six, or even better, do it by hand, okay? So in this case here, I'm gonna get four plus x squared is equal to, uh, two squared is four, the square root of six squared is six. These are being multiplied together. So four times six is gonna be 24. Okay, if you subtract 4 from both sides, you get x squared is equal to 20. Okay, the square root of 20, when you take the square root of both sides, the square root of 20 is going to be your answer. Okay, remember, 20 is a square root that can be broken down. Okay, you look for the largest perfect square that can go into 20. 4 is the largest perfect square that goes into 20. The square root of 4 is 2. It's being multiplied by the square root of 5. So your missing side here is going to end up being 2 radical 5. Okay, so 2 squared plus 2 radical 5 squared is going to give you 2 radical 6 squared. That's how the theorem would work for some of these tougher examples. Okay, one other thing that I'm going to look at, and I'm going to go a little bit more in depth to in another video, is the idea that you can actually substitute more than one variable in. Uh, we have a tendency to say, oh, the Pythagorean theorem helps you find lengths of sides of right triangles if you know two sides and you want to find the third. But you actually can use variables. And as long as you're only working with one variable, you actually can still come up with something that can be solved, okay? Let's take a look at that over here. If I have an isosceles right triangle, so that would be a right triangle that's got two congruent legs and then a hypotenuse, um, I actually only need to know the length of one side and I should be able to find the, the lengths of the two legs. Um, so what I can do here is I can label both of these with a variable. So I put in an x plus an x and I can still fit all that into the Pythagorean theorem and I can still get a solvable equation. So the Pythagorean theorem says take the leg squared, add the leg squared, and it's equal to the hypotenuse squared. Okay? Uh, x squared plus x squared is going to be 2x squared. 20 squared is equal to 400. Okay? You just basically solve that equation. Divide both sides by 2, you would get x squared is equal to 200, and then you can break down the square root of 200. Okay? Square root of both sides. Uh, the square root of 200 
we are going to have to do a little bit of work here. Uh, the square root of 200 does break down. There's several perfect squares that go into 200. Uh, for example, 4 goes into 200. However, the biggest perfect square that goes into, into 200, which is really the one you want, is 100. Okay, that's the square root of 100 times the square root of 2. That's 10. That's the square root of 2. Okay, which is not going to simplify down. So that side ends up being 10 radical 2. This side ends up being 10 radical 2. If you square both of those and take the square root, you would get 20. So keep that in mind. You actually can put variables into the, the Pythagorean theorem. As long as you only have one variable type, you should get a solvable equation. It may be messy, and we're going to see that in the upcoming video, but it should be solvable.